Hello, super user. So you're creating an expression, right? You're coming over here. I don't know, you're doing Metsu Piano like that, right? And you notice that there's these little arrows over here. And you're like, what do those mean? If you're like me, you've been using Finale for years and had no idea what those arrows meant. Well, today we're going to solve that problem. And it's actually a lot simpler than you might think. Now, and first, we're going to confuse the problem even more, right? Because I believe by default, they are above the staff, right? If you look over here, they're above the staff. But now we're going to come up here to expressions and adjust below the staff, right? And now we see while well, the arrows are below the staff. So now here's what they do. They are setting the baseline for the document. So if you come over here to edit categories, we can see in the position that they're talking about below staff baseline or entry. That's what these arrows are. They're the baseline. So a lot of the positions for the expressions will be in reference to this baseline. So what we can do is we can actually take these arrows and move it. And the baseline moves as well, right? We can literally just move the arrows anywhere and it will move correctly. And this is amazing. Like, I don't know, you have a ton of dynamics and you want them to be all level like that. You just move the baseline and they all move with you. Moving it above could be useful if you're making a vocal part and you want dynamics, but dynamics usually go above the staff. Of course, there's not just the one arrow over here. There's actually four of them. So let's figure out what each of them use. So the first one, as you might have been able to notice, sets the baseline globally. That means anywhere we look, that baseline will be set there. And if we go back to the parts, that's where the baseline is. The next one sets the baseline globally for a specific part. So for instance, if I create another part, we're going to come over here. I don't know, let's just add an instrument. Sure, Oba looks good today. And we have more dynamics or something like that, yada, yada, yada. And over here, I move this up on this part. It does not change it over here on this other part. Now, this does affect the link parts right now. For instance, on the blank staff part, the baseline still moved again. However, they did not move on the oboe linked part. And so that can be really useful. Like, okay, oboe is a bad instrument, but if you have an instrument that typically plays very low, like that, then you can set those dynamics should by default be lower than anyone else. Now, the one other thing to keep in mind is that these all are linked up in the hierarchy. For instance, if I move this fourth one, the rest of them move after that, even though I already adjusted the position of the third one, this one. Now it comes this arrow. Now, as you can imagine, this arrow is a lot more specific because we went from global to only on the part. Now we're going to go to only on one system of one part. For instance, if I go down here to uh, this one, Right, and I just start adding in more dynamics over here, like that, and we come over here, and we can adjust these, and it only affects the one system and not the rest of them. The ones down here are not affected. And this stands true for the parts as well. You can see it does not affect the parts. It only affected the one system on the one part. Then comes the fourth baseline. I have no idea what this baseline does. The rest of them all make sense. So in creating this video, I decided let's just look up to see what this fourth baseline does. And if you go to Finale's website, it says moving the fourth baseline has no effect at all. So basically, I have no idea why that arrow is there, because even Finale themselves says it does absolutely nothing. So that's just a, what, a weird tidbit about it. But either way, that's an introduction to each of these arrows that you can use to help create a more unified and consistent look in all of your parts. So if you found this video useful and informative, make sure to hit that like button. That way I know you want more content just like this. And each week I create new content about how to use Finale to its fullest. So if you don't want to miss out on any of those videos, hit the subscribe button so that we can get notified whenever a new video comes out.